What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quarter. And look, people lie. They lie all the time. People have lied since literally the beginning of time. But our media is supposed to try and suss that out and do some level of due diligence, figure things out, understand who's lying, who's telling the truth. And the thing is that they're so desperate for any kind of content that is divisive. They refuse to fact check anything, refuse to second guess anything. And so we've been inundated with numerous high profile racial hoaxes over the past couple of years. Perhaps the biggest one being that French actor, Juicy Sommelier, who still to this day has tens of thousands of people defending him. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the same tens of thousands of people who are sipping for a, a obvious liar uh, are ignoring the facts about Kyle still saying, oh, you cross state lines, you cross state lines. Well, last week we had a uh, Duke volleyball player who uh, at least allegedly, uh, well, no, she came out and said that someone called her the N-word. And so the schools, of course, without doing any kind of investigation, said, oh my God, we got to get rid of the student sections because... You know, somebody called this this black athlete the N-word. No evidence whatsoever. You could see this excellent article by Amber Athy says, Duke University player Rachel Richardson claimed that she was a target of slurs during a match against BYU this past weekend, but her story seems to have less evidence than other allegations once leveled against a member of the school's lacrosse team. It was actually Lessa Pamplin, Richard, Richardson's godmother who first made the accusation on Twitter claiming that Richardson was called the n-word every time she served she was threatened by a white male that told her to watch her back going to a team bus a police officer had to be put by their bench Richardson later con later confirmed the incident via her own Twitter statement she further claimed in an interview with ESPN that someone in the BYU student section shouted the n-word each time she was in the serving position. Highly suspect. There are 5,000 people in that stadium and not a single one of them heard it. Uh, and man, way to throw your life away. Is Duke Ivy League? I don't know. It's, some, it's, it's, a, high, it's a prestigious school. She's probably there on scholarship. And now what? Richardson later confirmed the incident in her own Twitter statement. She claimed further in an interview with ESPN that someone in the BYU student section shouted the word. I heard a very strong negative slur, so I served the ball, got through the play, and then the next time I went back to serve, I heard it extremely clear again. But, but that was the end of the game, she said, adding that BYU section had gotten more extreme, more intense throughout the match. If you've been following the stream of thinly sourced accounts, of these type of crimes of recent years, she writes, key details from Richardson's stories may have raised some suspicions. Why was Richardson's godmother the first one to share it publicly? Why wouldn't the other members of the student section tell the offender to stop? Why didn't coaches and the athletic officials step in? College athletic matchups are usually filmed, so would the words not be caught on tape? Despite the lack of any kind of evidence whatsoever, thousands of people took the bait. BYU's athletic director met with Richardson to apologize after the match, and the school implied that they found the culprit by suspending one fan from future games. To say we are extremely disheartened and the actions of a small number of fans, blah, 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 we have zero tolerance. Richardson's story was covered sympathetically without any question by major news outlets, including ESPN, Good Morning America, ABC News, CNN, and Deadspin. LeBron James, who infamously said that black men were being hunted in the streets, naturally chimed in as well. No longer, uh, not long after the nationwide hysteria broke out, more sober-minded individuals investigated the incident. BYU police reviewed footage from the match and said they did not reserve a sing observe a single person, including the fan who was uh, suspended, shouting that kind of word. And the fan who was, quote, identified by Duke players as the offender, but only by his voice. The police review found that this individual wasn't even in the student section at the time when these words were allegedly being said. I told the athletic staff that I never heard one comment of this like this being made. A BYU police officer wrote in this incident, various BYU athletes 
Empl athletics employees have been reviewing video from the TV, from BYU TV and other cameras in the facility and found nothing. BYU Associate Athletic Director John McBride said in a statement, the person who was banned was the person who was identified by Duke as using these words. However, we have been unable to find any evidence of the person using these words during the match. None. I'm surprised, uh, I'm surprised LeBron James didn't post this poor guy's picture. Screenshots of the full game footage posted by Turtle Boy Sports Blog show Richardson never reacted nor turned to look at the crowd while even serving. Meaning she was supposedly hearing all this but never reacted in any way, shape, or form. Nor did black other black members of the BYU basketball team who were right next to the student section react in any way, shape, or form. Seems odd that they would ignore one of their peers shouting the N-word. Interestingly, Richardson and her family seem quite keen to depict white people as villains. Pamplin Richardson's godmother, who first publicized the incident, happens to be a current judicial candidate in Texas. And her now private Twitter is filled with anti-white racism. White women and men always disappoint, she said in one tweet. These white folks ain't never had their butts kicked. They better get used to it. She also tweeted, Pamplin often called white people crackers and said that she felt she was at war with white people. She repeatedly denigrated black people who married white people. Richardson herself liked a viral tweet suggesting that Martha Luther King Jr. would support white people being enslaved. So Richardson, is Richardson just another juicy simoliet or Bubba Wallace dreaming up a crime so she can cash in on the attention? Has a demand for racism once again outweighed supply? Well, it certainly would look like it. Now, there are other words, I suppose, out there that you could say maybe sound like that. And, you know, you got confused and maybe you didn't like hear what you thought you heard. Like, okay, but maybe, like, look at this. Defending national champions women's basketball team cancels BYU series over a claim, an unsubstantiated claim. Here's the Washington Examiner. With another invention, media fails another fake news test. We just had Juicy Sommelier, Nicholas Sandman, and many others where there's a public accusation of racial impropriety, bad faith media actors leap into action. This time it involved a black volleyball player from Duke University. Some of these players claim that several members of BYU students section were, che were cheering and you know chucking the N-word at them. This was good enough for CNN's Brianna Keller and ESPN's Stephen A. Smith, as well as the Atlantic's Jamel Hill, who practically makes a living off such episodes, Nom nominally unbiased, very nominally, news outlets such as NPR, also ran with the accusation, once again, without a single bit of corroboration. Shortly after the story broke, both BYU student newspaper and the Salt Lake Tribune said that they could not verify any important details of the actual story. Campus police who looked at the incident could not verify any eyewitness accounts of the words being spoke. The BYU student newspaper spoke to several people on the record that stated they never heard nor saw the word. Duke volleyball player's godmother shows troubling past with her own racist remarks. What? Now, racism exists. Of course it does. I also believe that uh, it, is, it is not exclusive to one race who's able to do it or who, uh, who can experience it. I think people out there generally agree with my position that if you hate somebody based on any one of their, like, you know, based on their race and nothing more, well, then you're a racist. It's that simple. It doesn't need to be like, well, there's no systemic powers of this and that. No, 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 no. Look, if you look at an Asian person, you don't like them because they're Asian, you're a piece of garbage and you're racist. I, I just think that that is not a good way to live. And then I hope that you grow up and, and you know, you learn from that and you grow out of it because you're, you're going to miss out on a lot of great friendships and um and interactions and 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 in like cultural enrichment and all this kind of stuff that you can get from learning from other cultures but the other the other you know you see <laughs> my goddaughter is the only black starter for duke's volleyball team she tweeted while playing yesterday she was called the n-word every time she served she was threatened by all lies just a complete fabrication 
and all of her past tweets like, yikes. I knew she was married to a white boy just reading this tweet. Being married to a white woman, he thinks he can talk this stupid nonsense. Clarence 2.0. You are darn straight about white people being white. Bernie Sanders rallies are so white. If you're white, you totally would understand. You poor white MFers can't take it. Now, maybe her godmother made up the whole story and the Duke volleyball player didn't, didn't say anything. But as of right now, all sides remain quiet. And all this is going to do is cause more division. You want to call out real instances of it. I think that that's good, smart, fair, you know. But uh, this is f even more ridiculous than Juicy Sommelier for a lot of reasons. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you leave a like and you click that red subscribe button down below. And we'll talk to you again real soon.